anxiety had got really um, heavy on me. And instead of me, you know, persevering and pushing through those finals, I actually just gave up. So what's up guys? This video is actually just a story time on my personal experiences and why I chose to leave Denison University. So in the past couple of years, a lot of you guys have been asking me to share my experience on why I chose to just leave Denison University. I was not academically suspended. I was not academically kicked out or anything like that. I just actually chose to leave. So if you're interested in knowing why I left Denison University, please stay tuned and watch this video. So real quick too, let me give a disclaimer. I am not throwing any shade on Denison University or the people that attended there while I was there, anything like that. Because actually since I was a junior in high school, I knew what college I was going to already. And I knew that that was my dream school. Actually, I went to Denison when I was a sophomore um, on like a college trip. But by my junior year, I was convinced that that was my dream school. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing, that I wasn't going there, anything like that. So as you guys know, I'm from Chicago. And Denison University is located in Granville, Ohio, which is near Columbus, Ohio. So it's actually about a six and a half hour drive. Um, I actually was born and raised in Chicago. Lived on the west side my whole life. And then I went to high school on the south side of Chicago. So that was already a big transition for me. I had never been on the south side of my life until I came to high school. So it was like a culture shock too. And when I went away to college, that, that was a big culture shock for me as well. Not only being surrounded by a lot of white people, but I was also surrounded by some black people who I didn't necessarily fit in with or feel comfortable fitting in with. So again, it was just that um, like uncomfortability feeling. And um, it was just something that I had to come to terms with. It was just a culture shock for me, again, like I said, just to be around people who didn't look like me. And then for many of the black students, um, I felt like, you know, even though a lot of them did grow up in urban communities like me, I felt like a lot of us, you know, also went to more predominantly white schools or we had already, you know, immersed ourselves with the white. Uh, culture. So a lot of us was kind of used to living in that lifestyle, but all of us know, all of us black Americans know that's not easy for us to do. And for, for my white friends, I always tell you guys that that's why we walk around with a stale face all the time. Because it's hard being black in America. It's hard being black in America. It's hard being black in America. <laughs> like period. But anyways, my philosophy class where I was not only the only black person in my class, but for the first two weeks, uh, well, actually, I was in the class for two weeks, and then two other black people joined, but they were black males. So it's different, you know, being a black male in society versus being a black female. And I can't speak on our male experiences because I know they have it worse than us, but we all know women, we're at the bottom in, in society regardless. So being a black female is just twice as hard, in my opinion. But I just remember being in my philosophy class, and I remember there will be times when the teacher will be asking us questions or whatever, and when I would raise my hand and, you know, give an answer or whatever, I would get this face. Like, I'm thinking, like, close your mouth. What you staring at me like that for? Like, first of all, bro, I'm a human being just like you. Even if my skin is darker than yours or whatever, bro, why are you staring, though? You don't supposed to stare at nobody with your mouth open. So... I just had to get used to the fact that, you know, I'm back at a school with predominantly white people. And for those of us black Americans who grew up in situations like that, you know what that entails. And so that was just another shocker for me to, you know, to be going to class every day and to be getting stared at. Not only in class, but while I'm walking around on campus. I still had an attitude problem. I still was immature. So it wasn't like I was just able to hold my head up had like I'm this proud black American and I'm enjoying being here. I'm getting that what y'all looking at? Like, bro, you you staring to what you looking at? So you know, walking around with this kind of anger a little bit, um, frustration a little bit built up inside of you, along with, you know, like I said, some academic challenges I was facing. 
And most importantly, um, it was the first time that I was separated away from my family for this um, long period of time. Like, I wasn't around anyone that I knew. So it was just really hard for me um, to get adjusted to college life, period. And so that was just the main struggle. My first semester at Denison, I did struggle a little bit um, academically, but for the most part, my grades were decent like I was getting A's and B's on papers or whatever but that um first semester instead of taking my finals I actually chose to leave school early and not take my finals which was a big um decision for me to do like I really didn't tell my mom I really didn't tell my friends on campus that I wasn't taking my finals and that I wasn't turning in my papers anxiety had got really um heavy on me and instead of me you know persevering and pushing through those finals, I actually just gave up. And I went home. I had a friend who was leaving college early, and she also lived in Chicago. And I actually just jumped in the car with her and left. And so that actually caused me to get basically straight Fs at Denison that first semester. So my first semester, I was academically suspended. And Denison gave me the option to, um, for the next semester, to attend the City of Chicago Community College and get above a 3.0. And if I did that, then I will return back to school with my full scholarship and everything will be peachy and cream. I did that. I went to Malcolm X College here in Chicago. I got um, above a 3.0. I wrote a really good letter. Um, almost 50% of my professors that semester wrote me letters of recommendation pleading the university to let me back on because they were saying this, this, this was one of my best students for the semester. I don't understand how she got an F when all semester... You know, this is the type of behavior we see from her. These are the type of grades she was getting. We don't know why. Da, da, da. But um, that second semester, I had returned back to Denison, which was my third semester in college. Um, I actually did do much better academically. I took my finals that semester. I didn't fail a class or I didn't get a D. But I also chose to leave after that second semester just because at that point, I was closer to God and... Um, I felt the courage and I felt the ability to just trust God and know that, you know, yeah, it may be embarrassing for me to just up and leave this four-year college and it may, you know, look bad on me. People may judge me like, why did she leave that school? She had a four-year scholarship or or she's just a, another college dropout and da, 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 da. Like, yeah, I felt bad and that's honestly why I battled with suicidal thoughts for a couple of years, but... Um, just my faith and my trust in God let me know that that's not where I needed to be at that time. Where I needed to be was back home um, to actually follow my dreams. When I did return home that second semester from Denison University, my mother had just started a cleaning company. Um, she had the opportunity for me to follow my dreams because I had always wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I was really excited to leave school. It sounds crazy um for someone to have a four-year academic scholarship to one of the best schools in the country which actually ranks 47 amongst all colleges and universities so denison is a very good prestigious school and i just up and left them <laughs> but in my heart i knew that i wanted to be an entrepreneur and so i was very happy with my decision to leave um college and to come home and pursue building a business for me and my family but for those of you who always wanted to know why in the heck did I leave Denison University? <laughs> Here is your answer. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That's just what it is. I don't know what to tell you guys, but if you guys have been watching me on social media, you know that every year I get happier. That's just the reality. God is blessing me in ways that I didn't imagine in the past that he would bless me. So I'm really happy with my decision. And, um, yeah, like I said, I love Denison. This is not to talk bad on Denison or any of the people that I went to school with. I love everybody that I went to school with. I still um, keep in contact with a lot of my friends from Denison. Actually, they're the best friends I ever had. Like, I never met genuine friends who didn't feel like they had to be in competition with me. You know, my friend didn't care what I had and what they had or anything. We were just there supporting each other. And so I do love all the people that I went to school with I do love Denison but like I said it just wasn't for me wrong time wrong place <laughs> so there you guys go <laughs> my second video